Welcome to the podcast about venture capital, where investors and founders alike can learn how VCs make decisions and reach conviction. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome to another special release of Investor Stories. On this installment, the experts discuss a startup that they did not invest in, why they passed, and if there was a key learning that now informs their approach. Here is the segment called Why I Passed. On today's special segment, we have Darmesh Thacker of Battery. Darmesh, can you tell us a story about a good or a bad pass? A story about a startup that you passed on. Oh, man. That's a lot of them, man. <laughs> Give uh, us a good one. Look, I, so I think in my six years at Battery, I think like the, the two companies that we really, really like the founders, like the story. It was like smack in the middle of our fairway in terms of what we like doing. We had a good relationship. Uh, we should have done that deal. First one that comes to mind is early in my time at Battery with HashiCorp. Love the team. Dave McJanet just joined them. Armand and Mitchell, solid entrepreneurs, totally understand the pulse of the developer ecosystem. Uh, but we just couldn't get enough ownership. It's like We want a double-digit ownership. It's a Series B round. And, you know, company was a couple million in ARR. It's like, hey, we'd love to jump on board. We've known you for many, many years. And we just couldn't get there on the ownership because it was too little for our fund size. And, you know, at the end, you got to stick with your disciplined approach. But you look at this company and you know they were going to be successful and it's going to be a monster company. And I wish them really well. But certainly in my anti-portfolio, I would say. Uh, and I wish them the best. Like, it's just a great set of people out there. And the second one comes to mind is, you know, GitLab. We, we like the company. It's, it's a great entrepreneur. Good guy. Uh, we really like the story around just Git and developer ecosystems. But we were conflicted. We had a portfolio company, JFrog, which has done great uh, as well. But yeah, I think those are a couple of them that come to mind. And I could go on and on and on. But, you know, I'll embarrass myself if I keep going. So uh, at the end, you focus on what you have. You know, you focus on what you have and... Uh, and wish the rest the very best. But you know, as you learn in Silicon Valley, you maintain those relationships because you miss them once, you get them the next time. <laughs> On today's special segment, we have Amy Noikis of Anthemus. Amy, can you tell us a story about a good or a bad pass? A story about a startup that you passed on? <laughs> um, if I can tell you, I can tell you, I'll tell you one with a name and one without. Is that okay. fair? Let's do it. <laughs> So let's see, um, a good pass. There was a company that um, was right in our sweet spot of democratizing finance that we felt very strongly didn't uh, fully understand how the markets worked and were potentially putting themselves in a position where they might um, be left holding the bag and or their customers being in a particularly dangerous position. And I'm quite happy to say that we did not play in that round. Uh, so that was a good pass. Uh, bad pass. And you know what? Lessons learned. We, you know, Sean and I saw saw Stripe really early. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really early. Brutal. But we couldn't get our heads. And, you know, it was just us. It was like, would have been, would have been like our second or third investment. Uh, we had only so much money and we just couldn't figure out how the heck they could justify that that valuation that they were coming to us with. And in hindsight, that would have been probably worth grabbing. <laughs> On today's special segment, we have Jonathan Lair of Workbench. Jonathan, can you tell us a story about a good or a bad pass, a story about a startup that you passed on? There's a lot. Given we have a concentrated approach, we kick ourselves every day on companies we pass. I'll share one learning that is probably relevant for newer GPs. So in the early days of Workbench, uh, the container ecosystem at large really became a thing. We were investors in a company, CoreOS. And they were really commercializing Kubernetes and, and the orchestration piece. And they did have some security capabilities, but what ended up happening is container security spawned into its entirely own category that Docker, Mesosphere, and CoreOS were not really going after. And because we were newer GPs, because we were super cautious around conflicts, which is a, a good thing, but we missed a whole category that had many, many, many multi hundred million dollar exits. And there were, we did a dinner that I always kick myself on in San Francisco uh, back in 2015. You know, Mitchell Magic Corp was there. 
I forgot who from Docker was there. Like, I think Paul V from Coros was there. And then we had a bunch of other container security companies. And one of them after the dinner called me, like, you got to get involved with us. And in hindsight, given what we know now, you know, being eight years in, I, I would have encouraged us as a team to have a view on the landscape that's broader than what we had, as well as understanding, all right, we think this company is going to go here. We think this other one's going to go there. And actually it's not a conflict. So that, that was a big learning of just, of course, every founder says we're going to do everything to everyone. And as a VC, I, I would argue you really need to respect conflicts, but there is a middle ground where you can be thoughtful around where they're going and where you think they're not and be able to make investments in a, you know, container ecosystem was such a massive category to only have one bet there, I think was a misstep on our part. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, I, I come from the world of, of market maps and mechos and putting together M and A strategies. And, um, in the startup world, there's always a balance, right? Because you have your, your market map, but sometimes you meet startup founders that are proposing reinventing it. And it's like, huh, how do I get my head around that? I've never thought about it from that standpoint. And so you, it's kind of like the ground is constantly shifting under your feet. Exactly. So it's difficult. And we always want to put our existing founders first, our respect for them, because we never want to have conflicts, especially at our firm size, where we're super hands-on, we're not doing a spray and pay approach. But uh, there is there is a balance, as you point out. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, overprepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me.